Check with your customer to ensure that you have the proper flavor lineup. Confirm you have all brand and flavor shot syrups on site before the installation. Make sure you are prepared with the required backroom package accessories. The IDC Pro requires a standard backroom package utilizing standard BIBs as well as a water booster, water regulator, and an additional secondary CO2 regulator for flavor shot pumps. Make sure you have proper equipment to safely move the IDC Pro. A table lift is recommended. Ensure the counter that the IDC Pro sits atop can account for 1,000 pounds of weight. This includes the IDC Pro, the IDC Pro filled with ice, and an ice maker. Here is a quick overview of the IDC Pro components for your reference. We will reference these components in detail throughout this video. Please note the IDC Pro shipment includes two boxes. One box includes the IDC Pro. The second box strapped to the same pallet with the unit includes a configuration kit. Be careful not to misplace the configuration kit box. Each IDC Pro is available with or without a drip tray depending on the store application. If the IDC Pro is shipped with a drip tray, these items will be shipped with the IDC Pro. Carbonator pump deck, a drip tray, an accessory kit. The accessory kit includes the following. An installation and operator's manual one drain hose for the drip tray, two rubber boots for the cold plate drains, ice maker support bars for the IDC Pros that require a top-mounted ice maker, RTV silicone tube, cold plate, and ice chute cleaning brush. An IDC Pro without a drip tray is known as a Z-Style IDC Pro. If the IDC Pro is shipped without a drip tray, the following items will be shipped with the Z-Style IDC Pro. A carbonator pump deck, a Z-Style splash panel, an accessory kit, the accessory kit includes the following, the installation manual and operator's manual, two drain hoses for the cold plate, ice maker support bars for the IDC pros that require a top mounted ice maker, RTV silicone tube, a cold plate and ice chute cleaning brush. The second box shipped with the IDC pro contains the configuration kit. The configuration kit includes the following, a USB flash drive, this USB flash drive includes the customer specific media content, brand and flavor shot lineups. Optional Bricks Cup, a Bricks Cup might not be included with all configuration kits. For international markets, the configuration kit includes the following. A USB flash drive, this USB flash drive includes the customer specific media content, brand and flavor shot lineups. A power cord for this specific country or region. Some international regions will receive installation and operators manuals translated for the specific market. When unboxing the IDC Pro, please note, do not remove the tape from the door until the IDC Pro is placed on the counter. This will ensure the door does not open while moving the unit. It is important to not put pressure on the door when moving the IDC Pro. When moving the IDC Pro, pull the tubing towards the front of the unit to ensure it does not get pinched between the table lift and the bottom of the IDC Pro. If legs are required, put them on the IDC Pro prior to placing it on the counter. You are only able to use the legs if the IDC Pro drip tray is used. Carefully slide the IDC Pro onto the counter. Be careful to not scratch the countertop. Also ensure that you do not pinch the lines while moving the IDC Pro onto the counter. Do not plug the IDC Pro in at this time. 
Once the IDC Pro is set in place on the counter, remove the tape which holds the door shut. Open the door by gently pulling on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen and gently glide the door open. To remove the nozzle cover, first remove the thumb screw from the frame crossbar. Grasp each side of the nozzle cover and pull towards you in an upward motion to remove. Once you've removed the nozzle cover, place the thumb screw in its original hole for safekeeping. When removing the splash panel, first loosen the screws holding the upper left and right hand corners of the splash panel. Grasp both sides of the splash panel, lift upward to unhook the key slots from the screws. If you are top mounting an ice maker, the IDC Pro's ice hopper lid acts as a universal ice maker adapter kit. The ice maker adapter lid contains pre-scored lines. If following these line guides, you must completely cut through them to remove. To cut the appropriate section on the lid, you first must remove the front or side cover of the ice maker to review where the drop zone is on the ice maker. After identifying the drop zone, use a razor knife to score an appropriate size section in the ice hopper lid to allow for ice to drop into the hopper. You may need to cut outside the pre-scored lines of the ice hopper lid. After scoring, make a cut into the ice hopper lid. You can either complete cutting the scored areas using a razor blade or insert a flathead screwdriver to assist with removing the scored area. This is a food contact zone. Avoid cutting a larger section than needed to eliminate gaps outside the drop zone. This will eliminate any possibility of ice contamination. Place the ice maker support bars in the appropriate cutout slots based on your ice maker size. The cutouts are located around the top edge of the ice hopper. Ensure the ice maker is supported by the bars and your support bars are not obstructing your ice drop zone. Once your ice maker support bars are in place and you are ready to mount your ice maker, apply RTV silicone adhesive around the top edge of the ice hopper. Once you have applied the RTV, place a hopper lid on the hopper. Apply the hopper lid so the manual fill opening is facing the front of the dispenser. You will also apply RTV around the base of the ice maker to form a seal to prevent any water or condensation from leaking. This is only required if using a top mounted ice maker. Run your drain lines prior to running your product lines to ensure you have enough room for routing your product lines. Route the drain hoses under the IDC Pro toward the drain and secure the boots using a zip tie to ensure they will stay in place. When using a drip tray, you will receive a single drain line which should be routed under the IDC Pro to provide enough room for routing your product lines. Connection of the drain line to the drip tray will be made at a later point. For your reference, here is an overview of the syrup line layout. You will find 14 barbs extruding from the cold plate for your carbonated beverages. The carbonated branch will be connected to the barbs extruding from the cold plates. Barbs 1 through 7 are for your left nozzle. Barbs 8 through 14 are for your right nozzle. There are three ambient syrup lines for each nozzle, with A1, A2, and A3 feeding your left nozzle, A4, A5, and A6 feeding the right nozzle. The ambient lines are recommended to be used for non-carbonated brands. Eight lines will be used for your flavor shots. There are four flavor shot lines for each nozzle. F1, F2, F3, and F4 feed the left nozzle. F5, F6, F7, and F8 feed the right nozzle. To ensure there is enough clearance for the splash panel to fit properly, it is highly recommended to place the ambient lines and flavor shot lines between the cold plate barbs. This should be completed prior to connecting your syrup lines. Please note the order of the ambient lines and flavor shot lines. This will ensure adequate clearance. When plumbing the IDC Pro, you are able to run individual syrup lines to individual cold plate barbs, ambient lines, or flavor shot lines, such as syrup line 1 to cold plate barb 1, syrup line 2 to cold plate barb 2, etc. If your brand lineup requires pouring the same brand on both nozzles, you are also able to tee the lines to have one syrup line feed two cold plate barbs, two ambient lines, or two flavor shot lines. It is important to document which brands or flavors you will be connecting to each specific cold plate barb, ambient line, and flavor shot line. We recommend creating a brand map similar to this example. This is done prior to connecting your lines. 
When creating your brand map, identify the brand or flavor on each syrup line and allocate them to a specific cold plate bar ambient line or flavor shot line. In this example, we will be teeing all of our lines to have each brand and flavor shot dispensed from both nozzles. For example, we have determined syrup line one is cola. We have allocated cola, which is line number one from the back room, to S1 on the left nozzle and S8 on the right nozzle. Keep this map as it will also be used to program the IDC Pro at a future point of the install. Following the brand map you have created, connect your syrup lines as you would on traditional fountain equipment using your standard splicers and odikers. After connecting all your brand and flavor shot syrup lines, it is now time to plumb the carbonator pump. Here is what is included with the external carbonator pump deck. The pump deck is powered through a power cord connected to the IDC Pro. This power cord is 6 feet long and can be found inside the IDC Pro above the cold plate. Due to the length of this power cord, the pump deck must be mounted within 6 feet of the IDC Pro. There is a power on off switch located on the electrical box of the pump deck which must be in the on position to run. This switch does not reset any no water or low water errors. No water or low water errors are only cleared by power cycling the IDC Pro. This is how the water on your pump deck should be plumbed. The incoming water will come from your water booster at roughly 90 to 110 PSI. It will then flow through the preset 65 PSI water regulator to the inlet of your carbonator pump. From there, it will flow from the outlet of your carbonator pump to the CW barb located on the front left side of the IDC Pro. You now need to supply plain water to the IDC Pro. To do this, you will insert a T-fitting between the preset water regulator and the inlet of your carbonator pump. Now run a piece of 3 8 line from the T-fitting to the PW barb on the front left side of the IDC Pro. The incoming CO2 supplied from the main source should be at or above 80 PSI. It will then be connected to the inlet of the 75 PSI preset CO2 regulator on the pump deck. To feed your carbonator tank with CO2, you will run a quarter inch line from the outlet of the CO2 pump deck regulator to the quarter inch line connected to the internal carbonator tank. At this time, you should have everything plumbed. After confirming that everything is plumbed properly, it is now safe to turn your CO2 on to supply your pump deck. When you engage the CO2 to your pump deck, it will also fill the IDC Pro's internal carbonator. At this point, you may hear a popping noise from the relief valve. This is air being relieved from the tank and it is normal. The internal carbonator relief valve is located behind the ADA panel. If you ever have to pull the relief valve while the carbonator is full, make sure water does not spray onto the ADA keypad. At this time, turn on the water supply to the IDC Pro and check all water connections to ensure there are no leaks. Now engage CO2 to the BIB pumps and check for leaks. Finally, engage CO2 pressure to the flavor shot pumps at 30 PSI. At this point, everything is pressurized and you should check all connections for leaks. If the IDC Pro is powered on and the internal carbonator does not have water in it for more than five minutes, it will time out and cut power to the carbonator pump. This is a safety feature to prevent the carbonator pump from running dry and burning out. If this occurs, you will need to power cycle the IDC Pro to reset the air. Note, flipping the carbonator pump switch on and off does not reset this air. If the application requires a drip tray, it is now time to connect the drip tray to the IDC Pro. First, remove the outer cover of the drip tray by removing the tape from the side screws. Then, remove the side screws to remove the drip tray cover from the drip tray. At this time, the drain line should be routed under the IDC Pro. Using a razor knife, cut the drain line insulation at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. Use caution to not cut the drain line. Peel the insulation back to gain access to the drain line. This will allow easy attachment to the rear drain port of the drip tray. Attach the drain line to the drain port of the rear of the drip tray and clamp tightly. Failure to tighten the clamp can result in a leak.
Place the cut portions of the drain line insulation over the hose clamp and ensure that the seams are sealed with insulation tape. To apply the drip tray, first loosen the Phillips screws on the lower left and right corners of the IDC Pro. Next, attach the drip tray to the IDC Pro by sliding the drip tray keyholes over the Phillips screws you just loosened. You may need to guide the drain line under the counter to have room to apply the drip tray. Connect the drain boots to the cold plate drain port and ensure they are facing down to drain into the drip tray. Lastly, insert the side screws into the mounted drip tray. Apply the drip tray cover over the drip tray so the side screws line up with the opening in the side of the drip tray cover. Tighten the screws to secure the drip tray cover. Insert the USB flash drive from your configuration kit. Do this by removing the black USB cable from the back of the screen and inserting the configuration USB flash drive into the same USB port. Power up the IDC Pro by plugging it into an outlet at this time. On initial startup, select Load from USB, followed by selecting Yes, Load Custom Settings from USB. After the configuration is loaded, the home screen will appear. Note that there are two portions of the screen. The top portion displays merchandising content, while the bottom portion is for drink selection. At this time, you will see a plain water and carbonated water icon for the left and right nozzles in your drink selection area. Dispense plain water first to prime the system and carbonated water to verify you have carbonation. <clears throat> Dispense carbonated water until you have good carbonation. At this point, you should be listening for your carbonator motor to activate. Now access the service screen by tapping each corner of the merchandiser portion of the screen in a counterclockwise direction, starting in the upper right-hand corner to form a C. When you tap the corner, you will see a black square appear momentarily. This will indicate you have tapped the corner in the correct area. Once each corner is tapped, the service menu access keypad will appear. Type in your passcode to access the service menu. Enter passcode 3333, then select Enter to access the technician level of the service screen. Select the Unit Setup button. Select Brand Mapping. The Brand Map screen allows you to assign a brand icon to each specific valve. First, ensure you are editing the correct nozzle, left or right. To select the left or right side, you will tap the checkbox next to the left or right icon in the upper left corner of the brand mapping screen. You will need to reference your brand map at this time to assign your brand icons to the correct valve. In this example, cola has been plumbed to S1 and diet cola to S2. Select the plus symbol under each valve to assign its icon. After selecting the plus symbol, the brand library will appear. Select the correct brand icon from the library to assign it to the valve selected. Note that each brand icon is pre-programmed to dispense carbonated or non-carbonated water when selected. If you are pouring the same brand from both nozzles, you can select the Copy to Other Side button to map each nozzle with the same icons. In this example, we have already mapped the entire right nozzle according to the brand map. We will now use the Copy to Other Side function to map the left nozzle. Once you have mapped your brands, select Save. This will save your changes and take you back to the unit setup screen. The flavor mapping screen allows you to assign a flavor shot icon to each specific valve. Follow the same steps as done in the brand mapping screen to map your flavor shot icons to each nozzle. Once you have mapped your flavor shots, select Save. This will save your changes and take you back to the unit setup screen. After you have mapped your brands and flavor shots, select Valve Purge in the Unit Setup screen. Select each valve to purge air from each line. You will know the air is removed when you have a steady stream of syrup flowing. 
This is done to ensure you have no air in your syrup lines. You have the ability to select up to four valves at one time. When you select the fifth valve, it will begin to dispense while the first valve you selected will automatically shut off. Continue purging each valve until all syrup lines have been purged of air. Once all valves are purged, select back. Prior to brixing, you will need to fill the hopper and coat plate full of ice. Ensure to agitate the ice during the brix process to confirm there is always ice on the coat plate. Enter the brixing menu on the IDC Pro by selecting Brix Setup from the Unit Setup screen. You will see the mapped brands and flavor shots for both left and right valves. The valve icons on the brixing screen are laid out to mirror the actual valves on the IDC Pro. For example, on the left valve bank A1 is on the far left side of the top row. Inside the IDC Pro on our left valve bank, A1 is also located on the far left side of the top row. Place your Brix cup under the appropriate nozzle and select the icon which you'd like to dispense. As soon as you select the icon, product will begin to dispense for a pre-programmed 4 second pour. Set your water flow rates first, followed by your syrup flow rates. Select carb water to set your carb water flow rate to 10 ounces. When you select carb water on the left valves, you will see CW1 and CW2 illuminate while carbonated water dispenses. When you select carb water on the right valves, you will see CW3 and CW4 illuminate while carbonated water dispenses. You will catch the dispensed carb water in the water portion of your ratio cup. You are targeting 10 ounces of water in the pre-programmed 4 second pour. Select plain water to set your flow rate while repeating the same steps as you did for carbonated water. Again, looking to achieve 10 ounces of water within the 4 second pour. When adjusting your flow rate for carbonated or plain water, you will only adjust your high flow water valve. You will adjust a flow control clockwise to increase your flow rate or counterclockwise to decrease your flow rate. After setting your water flow rates, it is now time to set each syrup flow rate. Select each brand, one at a time, dispensing into the correct portion of your ratio cup. Adjust flow controls on each valve as necessary to achieve syrup manufacturer's specs. In our example, we will bricks cola and have selected a 5 to 1 ratio. Notice how the syrup and water are in their appropriate compartments of the bricks cup and are level with each other. This indicates a proper Brix ratio is achieved. To set the flow rate for your flavor shot, select your flavor shot icon and set to manufacturer's specs. After setting the water flow rates and brixing all of your syrups, it is now time to apply the splash panel to the IDC Pro. You will do this by grasping both sides and sliding the upper left and right keyholes of the splash panel over the Phillips screw on the IDC Pro. Be sure the bottom of the splash panel is properly secure. Failure to do so can result in the ADA keypad not responding to touch. Tighten the Phillips screw to secure the splash panel to the IDC Pro. After securing the splash panel, it is now time to apply the nozzle cover to the IDC Pro. Carefully guide the ice chute lever, ice chute, and nozzles through the openings of the nozzle cover. Insert the nozzle cover hooks, located on the left and right sides of the nozzle cover, into the IDC Pro side panels. Push in a downward motion to set splash panel hooks in place. You may have to apply slight pressure to the IDC Pro side panel for proper alignment. Insert the nozzle cover thumb screw to secure the nozzle cover. Close the digital merchandiser by gliding it from the left to the right. Ensure that the black latch on the door overlaps the black latch on the right frame of the IDC Pro. Every time you close the door, you will hear the ice hopper agitate cycle. There is a safety proximity sensor located on the top center of the back of the digital merchandiser. This is a safety device to prevent ice agitation when cleaning or servicing the ice chute and or ice hopper. This sensor must be approximately within one inch of the sensor on the front bottom of the ice hopper lid to activate. The door must be fully closed for the sensor to be within proximity in order for the ice to be agitated and dispensed. Now access the service screen by tapping each corner of the merchandiser portion of the screen in a counterclockwise direction, starting in the upper right hand corner to form a C. When you tap the corner, you will see a black square appear momentarily. This will indicate you have tapped the corner in the correct area. Once each corner is tapped, 
the service menu access keypad will appear. Type in your passcode to access the service menu. Default passcode 1111 displays the operator's level. Default passcode 2222 accesses the manager level and has visibility to levels 1 and 2. Default passcode 3333 accesses the technician level and has visibility to levels 1, 2, and 3. The Load from USB icon should be selected when you are loading a configuration from your USB flash drive from your configuration kit at installation. This will only be used upon initial startup. The Use Current Settings icon should be selected when the IDC Pro has already been configured. This function uses the current machine setup from the installed configuration. Select this icon while updating the latest software. Selecting Skip Settings will postpone loading a configuration. Current settings will be used, but the IDC Pro configuration screen will appear each time you restart the IDC Pro. The Operator's Manual, Installation Manual, and Service Manuals are all loaded on the IDC Pro for reference. To access, select the Manuals button in the Service Menu, followed by selecting the specific manual you would like to view. The Screen Cleaning Lockout feature allows the digital merchandiser to be cleaned without activating the screen. Select the Screen Cleaning Lockout button, followed by Touch Here to start, and the screen will lock out for 20 seconds while not allowing any buttons to be activated. The System Messages screen will display the current status of the IDC Pro and its components. Select the System Messages button to review the current status. The Versions screen is used to verify which software the IDC Pro is configured with. Select the Versions button to view the software version loaded on the IDC Pro. When contacting Cornelius Phone Support, they will first ask you to reference this screen. The Password Change feature allows you to change the password for the service level screen you are currently accessing. For example, you can only change the password for service level 1 if you are in service level 1. If you are in service level 2, you can change the password for service levels 1 and 2. Select the Password Change button, followed by selecting the white area under Change Password to edit the password for that service level. If you forget your password, you can purchase a security key from a Cornelius sister company, 3Wire, which will allow you access to the service screen. If you've inserted a USB flash drive in the back of the IDC Pro's door, Select the Eject Thumb Drive button prior to removing the flash drive to avoid data corruption. A message will appear on the bottom of the screen, prompting you it is okay to remove the USB flash drive. The shutdown button is available on all service levels. Select the shutdown button to either perform a soft shutdown or restart the IDC Pro's computer. Select the System Settings button to set the time, time format, date, date format, language, and sleep mode settings. To set your time and date format, select the checkbox next to the desired format. To change the language, select the white area below Language Options and select your desired language. Select Date and Time Settings to set the current date and time. Adjust the date and time by using the plus or minus buttons. Select Set once you have set the current date and time. You have the ability to set time periods for the IDC Pro to enter sleep mode. The sleep mode feature allows you to put your screen on standby during set hours, which will preserve the life of your screen. When the IDC Pro is in sleep mode, nothing will appear on the screen unless the screen is touched. Touching the screen while in the sleep mode will disable the sleep mode for one minute. During this one minute period, the IDC Pro will function as normal and return to the sleep mode when the one minute times out. Select the Edit System Sleep Mode button to enable sleep mode. While in the Edit System Sleep Mode screen, first select Enable Sleep Mode checkbox. Then adjust the time bar to display the time of day you'd like the unit to go to sleep and wake up. Select Save once completed. Select the Marketing Data button to view the amount of each finished product dispensed, as well as export the data to the USB flash drive. To export the data, first insert the USB flash drive. Do this by removing the black USB cable from the back of the screen and insert your USB flash drive into the same USB port. You will see the title of your USB flash drive appear in the white box on the top left corner of the Media Devices screen. Select your USB flash drive, 
then select export data. Once the data is exported, you will be notified by the text, marketing data exported successfully, displayed on the bottom of the screen. Select the update software button to upload new versions of the IDC Pro software, which should be updated as needed and loaded to a USB flash drive. To obtain the latest version of the IDC Pro software, visit the website shown on the screen. Download the software onto a USB flash drive. First, you will insert the same USB flash drive you have downloaded the software to. Do this by removing the black USB cable from the back of the screen and insert your USB flash drive into the same USB port. Once you have inserted your USB flash drive containing the latest software, select the Launch Software Updater button, then select Update Software. The IDC Pro will recognize the software file from the inserted flash drive and display the file on the left portion of the screen. Select the file and then select Install Software. You will be prompted to restart the IDC Pro once the software update is complete. Once the IDC Pro restarts, the IDC Pro configuration screen will appear. Select the Use Current Settings, which will keep the existing configuration which was on the IDC Pro prior to updating your software. This allows your software to be updated while keeping your current settings, such as brand mapping, media content, marketing data, time, and date. The Media Playlist screen allows you to upload custom video and image content to display on the home screen merchandiser. Select the Media Playlist button. On the back of the IDC Pro's door, Unplug the black USB connection and insert your USB flash drive containing your media files to be displayed on the merchandiser. Video and image content must be formatted to the listed specifications in order to be properly displayed. To upload a video or photo from your inserted USB flash drive to the IDC Pro, select the pencil button on the right of any playlist. This will allow you to edit your playlist. Then select the add delete videos button. You will see title of your USB flash drive under the attached media folder. Select the title to open the flash drive. Select the media files you wish to copy to the IDC Pro's hard drive, and then select the right arrow symbol to copy the file to the local media files. Once completed, select Back to proceed back to the media playlist screen. To add a photo or video to the playlist, select the pencil icon next to the playlist you wish to add the media. Select the video files you wish to copy to the playlist, followed by the right arrow to copy them over. Once completed, click Save. The arrows to the right of your playlist allow you to adjust the order the media is played. To remove a file from the playlist, select the file, then the X next to the playlist folder. To add a playlist, select the Add button. The light blue colored area indicates the time period the media within the playlist will be displayed. You can adjust this time period by dragging the green and red bars on the playlist timeline. To remove a playlist, select the trash can icon on the media playlist screen. Then select the title of the playlist you would like to remove. If you are displaying still images on the merchandiser, the time between slideshow images meter indicates how long the still images will be displayed on the merchandiser. Once you have mapped your brands in the brand mapping screen, you are able to adjust the order they are displayed on the home screen through the cover flow order screen. Select the cover flow order button. You will notice the brand icon listed on the far left will be the icon displayed front and center on the cover flow of the home screen. To relocate where the brand is positioned, select the brand and use the left and right arrows to move the icon to the position in the cover flow you would like it to be displayed. The syrup shutoff button allows you to enable and disable the ability to dispense brand syrups as well as flavor shots. Select the syrup shutoff button. Then select the checkbox on next to brands and flavor shots to allow dispensing. The unit setup screen allows you to access the Brixing, Valve Purge, Water and Flavor Setup, Brand Mapping, Flavor Mapping, and Syrup Edit screens. Prior to Brixing, you will need to fill the hopper and cold plate full of ice. Ensure to agitate the ice during the Brix process to confirm there is always ice on the cold plate. Enter the Brixing menu on the IDC Pro by selecting Brix Setup from the unit setup screen. The valve icons on the Brixing screen are laid out to mirror the actual valves on the IDC Pro. For example, 
On the left valve bank, A1 is on the far left side of the top row. You will see the mapped brands and flavor shots for both left and right valves. Enter the Brixing menu on the IDC Pro by selecting Brix Setup from the Unit Setup screen. The valve icons on the Brixing screen are laid out to mirror the actual valves on the IDC Pro. For example, on the left valve bank, A1 is on the far left side of the top row. Inside the IDC Pro on our left valve bank, A1 is also located on the far left side of the top row. Place your Brix cup under the appropriate nozzle and select the icon which you'd like to dispense. As soon as you select the icon, product will begin to dispense for a pre-programmed 4-second pour. Set your water flow rates first, followed by your syrup flow rates. Select carb water to set your carb water flow rate to 10 ounces. When you select carb water on the left valves, you will see CW1 and CW2 illuminate while carbonated water dispenses. When you select carb water on the right valves, you will see CW3 and CW4 illuminate while carbonated water dispenses. You will catch the dispensed carb water in the water portion of your ratio cup. You are targeting 10 ounces of water in the pre-programmed 4 second pour. Select plain water to set your flow rate while repeating the same steps as you did for carbonated water. Again, looking to achieve 10 ounces of water within the 4 second pour. When adjusting your flow rate for carbonated or plain water, you will only adjust your high flow water valve. You will adjust the flow control clockwise to increase your flow rate or counterclockwise to decrease your flow rate. After setting your water flow rates, it is now time to set each syrup flow rate. Select each brand, one at a time, dispensing into the correct portion of your ratio cup. Adjust flow controls on each valve as necessary to achieve syrup manufacturer's specs. In our example, we will Brix Cola and have selected a 5 to 1 ratio. Notice how the syrup and water are in their appropriate compartments of the Brix cup and are level with each other. This indicates a proper Brix ratio is achieved. After you have mapped your brands and flavor shots, select Valve Purge in the Unit Setup screen. Select each valve to purge air from each line. You will know the air is removed when you have a steady stream of syrup flowing. This is done to ensure you have no air in your syrup lines. You have the ability to select up to four valves at one time. When you select the fifth valve, it will begin to dispense while the first valve you selected will automatically shut off. Continue purging each valve until all syrup lines have been purged of air. Once all valves are purged, select Back. Select Brand Mapping. The Brand Map screen allows you to assign a brand icon to each specific valve. First, ensure you are editing the correct nozzle, left or right. To select the left or right side, you will tap the checkbox next to the left or right icon in the upper left corner of the brand mapping screen. You will need to reference your brand map at this time to assign your brand icons to the correct valve. In this example, cola has been plumbed to S1 and diet cola to S2. Select the plus symbol under each valve to assign its icon. After selecting the plus symbol, the brand library will appear. Select the correct brand icon from the library to assign it to the valve selected. Note that each brand icon is pre-programmed to dispense carbonated or non-carbonated water when selected. If you are pouring the same brand from both nozzles, you can select the copy to other side button to map each nozzle with the same icons. In this example, we have already mapped the entire right nozzle according to the brand map. We will now use the copy to other side function to map the left nozzle. Once you have mapped your brands, select Save. This will save your changes and take you back to the unit setup screen. The flavor mapping screen allows you to assign a flavor shot icon to each specific valve. Follow the same steps as done in the brand mapping screen to map your flavor shot icons to each nozzle. Once you have mapped your flavor shots, select Save. This will save your changes and take you back to the unit setup screen. The Syrup Edit screen allows you to create or modify an existing brand or flavor shot syrup profile. To upload a new brand or flavor shot icon, first insert a USB flash drive containing the icon to be uploaded. 
Do this by removing the black USB cable from the back of the screen and insert your USB flash drive into the same USB port. Note the image format listed on the screen for both brand and flavor shot icons. Icons must be formatted to these specifications to be displayed properly on the cover flow. After inserting your USB flash drive, select the Add Delete Images icon. Under the Attach Media section on the left window of the screen, select the title of your USB flash drive to view the files it contains. Once you locate your brand or flavor shot icon file, select the file, then select the right arrow button to copy it to the Local Media Files folder on the right side of the screen. Once complete, you'll be notified by text, copy and complete, displayed on the bottom of the screen. Select Back, Once Complete. To create a new brand syrup or flavor shot, select the Add button. Select the white space under Name to name the newly created syrup. Select the white space under Syrup Type and select Brand if the syrup is a new brand, or Flavor if it is a new flavor shot. Select the white space under Water Type to label the beverages as carbonated or plain water. Select the white space under Ratio and type in the Bricks Ratio for your syrup. Lastly, select the plus symbol under Image to assign your newly uploaded syrup and icon for the cover flow. Select Save once complete. The backup and restore screen allows you to save a specific IDC Pro's current configuration file to the USB flash drive. To load a configuration, first insert a USB flash drive containing a configuration to be uploaded. Do this by removing the black USB cable from the back of the screen and insert the USB flash drive into the same USB port. Once you have inserted your USB flash drive, select the Load button under Backup and Load Configuration Files. You will see the title of your USB flash drive in the Attached Media window that will appear. Select the title of your USB flash drive, followed by selecting the configuration file. Select OK while the configuration is highlighted in blue. After selecting OK, you must restart the IDC Pro to complete loading the configuration. To back up a configuration, first insert a USB flash drive to back up the current configuration. Do this by removing the black USB cable from the back of the screen and insert your USB flash drive into the same USB port. Once you have inserted your USB flash drive, select the Backup button under the Backup Load Configuration Files. You are able to adjust the valve flush time if you experience flavor carryover. Select the Valve Flush button to enter the Valve Flush screen. It is recommended to keep flush times at factory settings, which can be done by selecting Restore to Default. Prior to making any changes, please contact Cornelius Customer Service. If you are experiencing touch calibration issues, you are able to recalibrate the touchscreen through the touchscreen calibration screen. Please contact Cornelius Customer Service prior to performing this action.